On April 13, 1612, a fateful duel took place on the small island of Ganryujima, located off the coast of present-day Shimonoseki, Japan. Sasaki Kojiro, the demon of the West, was a master of the legendary tea sabeim gaishi technique, renowned for its speed and deception. His challengers late for the duel, with each passing moment, Kojiro's anticipation grew, his focus honed to a razor's edge as he awaited the arrival of his opponent, his katana gleaming in the sunlight, ready to demonstrate his prowess to all who would bear witness. He exuded confidence, a testament to years of disciplined training and dedication to the art of the sword. Destiny would bring together two titans of swordsmanship, each destined to leave an indelible mark upon the pages of history. And so, with the sun casting long shadows upon the sands of Ganrijima, Sasaki Kujiro awaited the arrival of his challenger. When his foe arrived, his presence was like that of a dragon emerging from the mists of legend, awe-inspiring and commanding. Kujiro could sense the latent power emanating from this enigmatic figure. His unconventional choice of a wooden sword or Noah's pocket, only adding to the mystique. As the duel began, the later rival countered each blow with calculated precision, utilizing the extended reach of his humble Bakken to his advantage. Despite Kojiro's skillful maneuvers and the deadly precision of his strikes, his foe moved with an otherworldly grace, evading every blow with the agility of a dragon in flight. In a moment of fleeting vulnerability, Kojiro felt the weight of his foe final strike, a very strong hit that sounded like a dragon's loud roar. It killed him. The name of the triumphant swordsman, now etched in the annals of legend, is none other than Miyamoto Musashi. After winning the duel against Sasaki Kojiro, on the small island of Ganryujima, Miyamoto Musashi decided to leave the island and continue his journey across Japan. As he departed, a sense of relief and contentment filled his heart. Knowing that the small island was named Ganryujima after Sasaki Kojiro, Musashi's reputation as a master swordsman continued to grow and he found himself welcomed in various communities as he traveled. Along his journey, he encountered individuals from all walks of life, each with their own stories and wisdom to share. One day, while passing through a rural village nestled amidst lush green hills, Musashi stumbled upon a small dojo. Curious, he decided to enter and was greeted warmly by the sensei, a wise old man named Takahashi. Takahashi recognized Musashi's skill and invited him to stay and teach the students at the dojo. Grateful for the hospitality, Musashi accepted the offer and soon became a beloved mentor to the young martial artists. Under Musashi's guidance, the students flourished, not only in their martial arts skills, but also in their character and discipline. Musashi shared his knowledge not only of swordsmanship, but also of strategy, philosophy, and the importance of inner peace. As time passed, the village prospered, and Musashi found a sense of belonging he had not experienced before. He forged deep friendships with the villagers and found solace in the simplicity of rural life. The years went by, and Musashi continued to impart his wisdom to new generations of students. The dojo became renowned throughout the region, attracting aspiring warriors from far and wide. His story is not merely one of battles won and enemies defeated, but a journey shrouded in enigma and enlightenment. It begins in the quiet village of Miyamoto, where a child was born. Miyamoto Musashi was born in 1584 in a village called Miyamoto in the Harima province of Japan. He was originally named Shinmen Takso, his childhood was difficult because Japan was going through a time of lots of fighting and problems called the Sengoku period. From a young age, Takeko showed remarkable talent and aptitude for martial arts. He was trained in the way of the sword by his father, Shinmen Munizai, who was a skilled swordsman himself. 
However, Takezo's upbringing was far from conventional. His father was often absent, and his mother passed away when he was just a child, leaving him to fend for himself in a world consumed by chaos. As he grew older, Takzo's restless spirit led him into countless skirmishes and battles, earning him a fearsome reputation as a formidable fighter. He wandered the countryside, honing his skills and seeking out worthy opponents to test his mettle again. But amidst the violence and chaos of the Sengoku period, Takazu also yearned for something more a deeper understanding of the way of the warrior and the true meaning of martial prowess. His journey took him to remote mountains and secluded temples, where he sought the wisdom of wise hermits and martial arts masters. It was during this time that Takazo underwent a profound transformation, both as a swordsman and as a man. He adopted the name Miyamoto Musashi, casting aside his old identity and embracing a new path guided by discipline, humility, and self-discovery. Miyamoto Musashi's journey took an unexpected turn as he found himself under the tutelage of his uncle, a seasoned warrior whose wisdom was as vast as the mountains themselves. Musashi's father, Shinmen Munizai, recognized the untamed potential within his son and entrusted him to the care of his brother, hoping that under his guidance, Musashi would learn not only the art of the sword, but also the discipline and patience required to master it. For his uncle's watchful eye, Musashi's days were filled with grueling training regimens and lessons in the ways of combat. But from the break of dawn until the setting sun dipped below the horizon, Musashi honed his skills with single-minded determination, pushing himself to the limits of his endurance and beyond. But it was not only the physical aspect of training that Musashi's uncle sought to impart upon his young charge. He instilled in Musashi the importance of discipline, humility, and respect, values that would serve him well on the path to mastery. In the quiet forest, there's a story about a young warrior whose name would be remembered forever. Miyamoto Musashi, only 13, stood at the edge of his future, feeling excited and eager for adventure. In the year 1596, in a small village called Hirafukumura, there was a young boy named Musashi, who was only 13 years old. One day, a traveler named Arima Kie came to the village. He was known as a skilled swordsman and wanted to test his abilities by challenging anyone who dared to face him. Musashi, being eager and bold, decided to accept Arima Kihi's challenge. He wrote his name on the challenge board, showing his bravery. When word reached Musashi's uncle, Dorin, who was a monk at a nearby temple, he was shocked. He knew Musashi was still very young and tried to convince Kihi to cancel the duel because of Musashi's age. However, Kihi refused to back down and insisted that Musashi apologize to him to clear his honor. When the time for the duel came, Dorin tried to apologize on Musashi's behalf, but Musashi had other plans. He grabbed a long stick called a quarterstaff and charged at Kihi, shouting challenges. Kihi attacked Musashi with a small sword called a Wakizashi, but Musashi was quick. He managed to throw Kihei to the ground. While Kihei tried to stand up, Musashi struck him between the eyes and continued to beat him until he was defeated. It turned out that Kihei was not as skilled as he claimed to be. He was arrogant and too eager to fight, and Musashi's quick thinking and bravery won the day. And so, Musashi's first duel ended in victory, proving that courage and determination can overcome even the toughest challenges. At 16, Musashi sought out Tadashima Akiyama, a renowned swordsman in Yoko. Their duel was fierce. Despite Akiyama's reputation, Musashi emerged victorious. At 19, Musashi faced the formidable Yoshioka clan in a series of duels in Kyoto. Despite the odds, he emerged victorious in each match, his skill and determination earning him renown throughout the city and beyond. With each duel, Musashi's legend grew. His name whispered in awe and reverence across the land. But duel after duel, victory after victory, Miyamoto Musashi remained undefeated. Musashi won an amazing 60 duels, proving himself unbeatable time and again. Yo! Me, 
Yamato Musashi was a lone samurai, a solitary figure who wandered the countryside, beholden to no master but his own inner code of honor and discipline. With no lord to serve or clan to call his own, Musashi's path was his and his alone, guided by the principles of Bushido, the way of the warrior. When his later years, Musashi said, in his The Book of Five Rings, when I apply the principle of strategy to the ways of different arts and crafts, I no longer have need for a teacher in any domain. Miyamoto Musashi wasn't just good with a sword. He was smart too. He could think ahead and come up with clever plans to win battles. But fighting wasn't his only talent. He also loved art when he wasn't fighting. He proved this by creating recognized masterpieces of calligraphy and classic ink painting. His paintings are characterized by skilled use of ink washes and an economy of brushstroke. And if that wasn't enough, Musashi was also great at making swords. He knew all about metal and how to shape it into strong, sharp blades. So he wasn't just a warrior. He was an artist and a craftsman too. Miyamoto, Musashi's legacy extended beyond his own accomplishments. He also played a pivotal role in shaping the futures of two young men who would become great in their own right. He adopted two sons, Iari and Mikinosuke, guiding them with the same wisdom and discipline that had defined his own life. Under Musashi's tutelage, Iori and Mikinosuke flourished, their talents blossoming under his watchful eye. They honed their skills in the way of the sword, learning not only the art of combat, but also the values of integrity, perseverance, and compassion. Ten years later, in 1641, Musashi wrote a book called 35 Instructions on Strategy for a man named Hosoku Watada Toshi, who was a Japanese samurai daimyo of the early Edo period. This book later became the basis for another famous book called The Book of Five Rings. During this time, Musashi's adopted son became the master of arms for the Awari thief. However, in 1642, Musashi began to suffer from neuralgia, which caused him a lot of pain and hinted at future health problems. In 1643, he decided to retire to a cave called Rigando and live as a hermit. It was there that he started writing the Book of Five Rings, which he finished in 1645. As Musashi's health worsened, he sensed that his end was near. So on the 12th of the fifth month, he gave away all his belongings and handed his manuscript of the Book of Five Rings to the younger brother of his closest disciple, Terayo Maganojo. Musashi passed away in Riagando Cave around June 13, 1645. At the moment of his death, he had himself raised up. He had his belt tightened and his wakizenshi put in it. He seated himself with one knee vertically raised, holding the sword with his left hand and a cane in his right hand. He died in this posture at the age of 62. The principal vassals of Lord Hasekawa and the other officers gathered, and they painstakingly carried out the ceremony. Then they set up a tomb on Mount Iwato on the order of the Lord. Minamoto Musashi passed away from what is thought to be thoracic cancer. He died peacefully. After completing a book called Dakota, which means the way of walking alone, or the way of self-reliance. This book contained 21 rules about how to discipline yourself and live a good life. It was meant to be a guide for future generations to follow. Miyamoto Musashi's life wasn't just about fighting. It was also about learning and growing. He worked hard to become a master swordsman and taught us valuable lessons about staying strong and focused. When we face tough times, let's remember Musashi's determination and bravery. We should also learn to discipline ourselves and rely on our own strengths, just like Musashi did. His story inspires us to be resilient and true to ourselves, no matter what challenges come our way.